Carl's Headlock, and we're going to be talking about the lives of Diamond Bessie. A new book, right? Yes. Okay, good. It just came out in <laughs> April. It just came out in April. And mm -hmm. I was just telling folks I have learned more about Diamond Bessie than um, I would ever think that I would know about Diamond Bessie this past spring by being in the play. But you've got the real story. Um, I think I was part of a, a story that has been twisted through time. I don't know how else to say that, but it was still fun and a lot of, uh, but I did, I did learn a lot, but thank you, Jody, for being a part and Charles for coming as well. And I just, we can't wait to hear about this book. What's going to go on. If there's some juicy stuff in there, I'm sure. Maybe. <laughs> well, I, I did a lot of research. You did a lot so of research. did a okay. lot of research. Alrighty. Well, good deal. Well, um, so this launched back in April mm -hmm. and you've been working on this how long? Oh, well, <laughs> um, my husband Charlie introduced me to the story when we were first dating okay. a long time ago and I was uh, well we came over to uh, Marshall to meet his parents and mm -hmm. Charlie said let's take a day trip over to Jefferson okay. and um, unfortunately I was not familiar with Jefferson even okay. though I'd grown up around Dallas right and um, he said it was an inland river port and I was like what an in inland river port in northeast <laughs> Texas what are you talking about so we went over there and we went to the historical museum and I saw a full page newspaper article and it, uh, it was a Dallas paper from the 1930s mm -hmm. um, about uh, Diamond Bessie and Abra's child, and I read through it, and I thought, "Wow, why did this paper still care about this story so you know so many years? So many years, yeah. yeah. And how did he get away with it? Because it True. was just to me, it was just obvious, right? That okay. and at the time, this was this was a long time ago. This was in the nineties, mm -hmm. and so you had the O.J. Simpson trial, and I quickly learned that this. this this was the O.J. Simpson trial of the O.J. Simpson Texas. trial of the day. Yeah, of the day. that's true. Mm -hmm. It was a big deal, and it, lots it, of it made headlines knew about around. It. it made headlines around the country. That's right, how, mm -hmm. because he was a from a very uh, influential family. Correct. Uh, who was mixed up in a murder? That mm -hmm. doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and reputation at that time was everything. Yes, your yes. your reputation as a family. Yes. Um, Rich or poor, you 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 watched mm -hmm. after your reputation, mm -hmm. and he was um fr uh, he was from Cincinnati, mm -hmm. and he was of German descent, um, and his family was prominent in the Jewish community. Right. So yes, for uh, for a son to be accused of murder was huge, <laughs> huge, and having the last name Rothschild because of the connected with the other. Well, and <clears throat> and he wasn't part of that family. Right. But people thought he was, and I think mm -hmm. that he liked for people to think that he was. You could play on that. Yes, you could. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and in that day, you could throw a name around and get in anywhere. Or, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Have some credit, maybe some mm -hmm. places. Yeah. So that's good. So quickly on the Jefferson part, it is hard to imagine if it's your first time to Jefferson, how much was going on in Jefferson, that massive riverboats and all the things that was taking place, that it was a, it was a, a big major city. hub. Yeah. Well, it was much bigger than Dallas. Sure. People don't realize that, um, that... In the 1860s and 70s, Jefferson was the place, second only to Galveston. Wow. And it was, it was one of the a huge gateway to Texas. You mm -hmm. had so many people moving into Texas coming through, through right. Jefferson. So it was a pretty big town, of course, the, 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 the cotton mm -hmm. market, et cetera. Um, and it was much bigger than Dallas. Dallas was just a blip until about 1880. <laughs> okay. And 1880 is, uh, for a number of reasons, Jefferson started to decline and Dallas took off. It's too bad we don't have a song about Big J instead of Big D, right? That's true. And, uh, Moving through but Big I don't J. know if the J A how to spell that is good as the Dallas song. Yeah. Oklahoma, so anyway. But you know, there is a song about Diamond Bessie. Yes. Now, this is the first novel. Okay. There have been nonfiction books written about her. Okay. Uh, there are songs, and of course, there's the play in Jefferson. And mm -hmm. you played a brush I child. Played I can't Abe believe you played Abe. <laughs> <laughs> and I sang some crazy song about in, being in love and all this stuff about it. Mm -hmm. But anyway, as the ghost of Diamond <laughs> Bessie haunted me from behind. <laughs> yes. So this is the first novel. And I love it. The first part. So there's um, more to come. Well, no, no, no. The, the, this is just uh, the first novel. No, the first, first novel. Well, okay, sorry. first novel for me. <laughs> yes, okay. I love but the it. first novel about her, too. Yes. Yeah, first novel. Um, well, who knows if somebody else will write about her. Um, there's not a lot known about Diamond Bessie up until her murder. So mm -hmm. the first part of my book is more f fictional than fact. I see. You know, I needed to come up with a plot. You know, what what's a plausible story mm -hmm. for a woman in her position back then? But okay. It's, but it's based on research. That yes. You did. I found the memoirs of three 19th century prostitutes. Wow. 
because Diamond Bessie was a, a lady of the evening. She was a demi mondaine, mm-hmm. and so I found these memoirs, and that really, really helped inform the first part of my book. Right. I love that. Interesting story. When she was researching this, she would order these books on Amazon, mm-hmm. and she would do it through my account. So I would be at work at NBC News <laughs> sitting there, and I'd get a text, and it would say, your book, Hookers of the Old West, is on the way. <laughs> Like, what? Yes, <laughs> I did. We don't want that to get out, do we? Oh, no. I'm speaking of reputations, so <laughs> yes, I Local did a lot of research. Man <laughs> uh, but I, I love doing research, so it was yeah. a lot of fun to work on. And I spent two years just researching the case. Okay. Because when I first started working on this, it was everything was on microfilm. We didn't have newspapers.com. Right. So I spent two years going through microfilm. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh, I know. No. It is so much easier now to do research. Yeah. Oh, it's exponentially yeah. easier. Yes. But I, I, I love doing it. So one of the um, things that I found is that, well, there's, it's always, it's been rumored since Diamond Bessie's death that she was a woman named Annie Stone. Okay, you were mentioning that to me. Yeah. And, but she was actually, um, her, she was Annie Moore. Mm-hmm. She was born in Ireland. Her family came to the U.S. when she was very young. And they came to uh, up far upstate New York, Canton. Okay. Canton, New York. I mean, it's right by the St. Lawrence River. It's closer to Canada than New mm-hmm. York City, right. <laughs> just across the river. So um, she was a daughter of a farmer. And so she was not Annie Stone. Annie Stone was another woman who, because they both lived in Watertown, probably about the same time. Okay. So there was a rumor back then. And through actually through a friend of mine, through her research, she's the one who actually learned the true identity of, of Bessie. And I have that in the back here. I have an, uh, an extensive afterword where I explain what's fact and what's fiction. I see. Okay. And, and explain my research. I love it. So you're, you get the best of both worlds in your book. You, the fun of some fictional stuff, mm-hmm. but then you also talk about what you come up with but what and mm-hmm. how you got it. And as you were saying, Charles, about the – it's all based on – uh, research, but then going from there and I kind of guess branching off of, right. of the research uh, to create a wonderful story. Mm-hmm. So, the what is the what was your first attraction though? Is it just the the magnitude of the story, or was it just the what was well, your I'd attraction? Always, I'd always wanted to write a novel, and I didn't know what I wanted to write. Okay, and this she just got her hooks in me. <laughs> I see. <laughs> I was looking at that newspaper article and just thinking wow, this is an interesting story, and why is there still interest in it? Mm-hmm. And at the time, I didn't know that there was a play about okay. her. I mean, All right. I didn't realize that her you know, memory still lived on in yeah, Jefferson. The, the newspaper article was from the Dallas Morning News in 1936 or so 7? 1930s. 1930s, and it was talking about a crime that happened 50 years earlier. So what was a Dallas newspaper? Why would they be interested in a story a 50, year old 50 story. years ago? Yeah. Mm-hmm. To, to talk about it again 50 years later, mm-hmm. uh, that's what piqued your interest right. about well, it. Well, and, and I was a journalist. Okay. <laughs> so, that, like, like Charlie, uh, that's how we met. We were on a story. Okay. Uh, with different TV stations. Um, so I was, a, you know, I did TV news and, mm-hmm. uh, for a while. And so I just knew, immediately knew that it was a good story. And the right. time I was actually living in Charleston, South Carolina, I was working at a TV station there. Okay. I made a vow that when I moved back to Texas, because I knew I wanted to get back, uh, that I would look into it and see if it would make a good novel, and it was even more fascinating than I ever thought possible. I love it. There are so many things in here that and you I, that I could fictionalize that actually happened. Right. I mean that because <laughs> Abe did try to commit suicide when he went back to Cincinnati. Right. After after he mm-hmm. um, killed Diamond Bessie, and um, so you so, think he did it? Oh yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> No doubt. <laughs> and, a, um, and I did a lot of research on what happened to Abe. Okay. Right. And it's not, it's in the afterward because, uh, of course, a lot of people around here know that, you know, there, there are two trials. He mm-hmm. was acquitted at the second trial. And then he, he was one of the most wanted criminals of the last quarter of the 19th century. Yes. If you read the afterward, yeah, it's, it could be a movie in itself. It really right. is. A fascinating history of, of what happened to Abe right. after okay. all of this. He I, didn't just disappear. He didn't rot in jail at sure. all. He, yeah. he was out uh, traveling the country conning other people mm-hmm. yeah. almost in every state. <laughs> yeah, he was. And just it, a, 
a true con, con guy. Yes, con he was. Yeah. He was a true con artist. Yeah. And so I couldn't put that, fit that in the novel part of it, the, you know, the, mm -hmm. the uh, fictional story. So, yeah, but I have it in my afterword. And then also on my website, which is just my name, jodyhadlock.com. Okay. Um, I'm putting more details on there. I'm doing a more detailed breakdown. Of it. And just in case somebody would be really interested. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just in case. No, it is, it is fascinating. Uh, it's amazing to me. Uh, all I can go on is, is the play that I've been a part of. But the amount of people that came, it was, the place was packed every single night. There was five performances, and they were packed every time with a waiting list and people still wanting to get in. It was just mm -hmm. amazing. Um, we love we love all this stuff that goes on, don't we? We love intrigue and murder mysteries mm -hmm. and all of that kind of stuff that our television shows still, I mean, that's just stuff we like right. to watch and we're Every interested well, in. We're nosy people. <laughs> the true crime yeah. is one of the biggest genres right now. Right. Right. And yeah, we I think we've watched every true crime show. <laughs> well if you get those there. movie rights, I'll happily play Abe for you. If, uh, you, know, you would uh, like your own Abe. At the right height and physique and at, at that yeah. day and age I was a normal sized man, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> I wasn't considered short back in the eighteen something, so, you know, Not so. short. <laughs> anyway. Well this is still all fascinating. So where where do you go from here? Uh well I've been doing uh, events. Oh I have an should tell everybody I have yeah. an event in um, Jefferson uh, tomorrow evening. Okay, at that's, the Carnegie Library. That's Thursday at Thursday the night. Yeah. Thursday the night. Six thirty at the Carnegie 30. Library mm -hmm. in Jefferson. And I'll be there uh, discussing and signing my book. And actually, Books and Barrels, which is a an independent bookstore in Longview, mm -hmm. will be there selling my book. Oh right. The owner Laura Nevels is great. She's yeah. awesome. Really is. Good and deal. Yeah, she because I had a, a book party in Jefferson at the end of April, mm -hmm. and she was there. So uh, yeah, she'll she'll be there again in Jefferson. So I'm doing that. I'm, um, I have some library events coming okay. up, and then Barnes and Noble in Shreveport sometime. Yeah, I'm going to do a book signing uh, sometime in July mm -hmm. at in, yeah, Barnes and Noble in Shreveport. I'm getting that set up. And uh, just, yeah, keep promoting it. And then I am working, uh, starting to research my second book. I love it. <laughs> is it, can we have a taste? Is it in the line of this or is it something it'll still, else? It'll be historical fiction. Okay. Obviously, I, well, I love history mm -hmm. and uh, I love historical fiction, obviously, since right. I wrote it and I read a lot of it. Okay. And I'm going to stay in the, in the same time period. Right. And, and so Charles will be getting more crazy books sent to his Amazon <laughs> account at work. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Probably not this time. No. Well, I'm interested in actually in the second one, writing about Clara Barton. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she was a fascinating woman. Yeah, indeed. So, and then there's another idea that I, oh, actually, um, I was, my second book was going to be, there's, she was, she was from Marshall, mm -hmm. um, as an adult she came to, to Marshall, Lucy Holcomb Pickens. Um, she, she was known as the Queen of the Confederacy. Okay. And she... Uh, married uh, a man, uh, an older man who became U.S. ambassador to Russia in 1858. Wow! And they so they went over there, and she became a darling of the court. She um, and uh, w and that was Alexander the uh, Second, uh, and he is the one who abolished serfdom. And okay. Lucy Holcomb Pickens, she did she ha she abhorred serfdom, but then she came back and defended. The Confederacy with her husband, right? And so I thought, well, that's really interesting. So it I was going yeah. to do um, that was going to be my second novel, and I was hoping to go to Russia next year mm -hmm. to do some research. And then, of course, with the situation with Ukraine, Not going to Russia. yeah. So I <laughs> have no idea when I might be, you know. So right. I, but well, I that went on hold. Yeah, so that went on hold, <laughs> and then I have, you know, interested in, in Clara Barton, and well, we'll see where it takes you. You have to do the research, right? And um, you know, I, I really need to do more to determine if it would be a good novel, right? Indeed. Well. That sounds intriguing as well. There's, but there's lots of folks with uh, checkered past that you could write about, I'm sure. Uh, in all of East Texas, North West Louisiana, uh, all over, I'm sure. So, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a lot of stories. Yeah, and do you, yeah. do you find, how do you like, well, how do you go about finding all these local folks that you are talking about, even some of them, like the lady from Marshall? Oh, well, I found that, yeah, doing my research for Diamond Bessie, I, I didn't, it makes sense. A lot of historical fiction authors, they find their next book while they're researching, while they're researching the, the one, one that they're working, working on. Right. And I've read that so many times in different afterwards. You, know, you uh, just have to make a note to go back to yeah. that and check and that out. There was, um, and it was in a, because I was looking through all these newspapers at the period, 
and I came across Lucy Holcomb Pickens' name, and, and there was, you know, because she was known, because she was so well known at the time, mm -hmm. she was um, in the papers quite a right. bit. And so I thought, well, that's another interesting person. So I just filed that away until I finished this one. And this one was a long, it, I started this, the research in the, in the mid-90s, but then I, I set aside my writing for a long time. Okay. Um, for a long time. Came back to it in 2014. And that's when everything fell into place as far as writing this story. Because I uh, worked with a freelance editor and she challenged me to write it from a particular point of view. Right. I don't want to give away. <laughs> yeah. And then everything fell into place. And um, But it's, it's a long journey to get a book published. Would you say that having uh, writing a book is almost like having children, that you just have to sit things aside, your life kind of goes on hold, and you do life, and then you come back and you... <laughs> no. Well, you know how much I worked yes, on it. Yes, did. She worked a lot. Yeah. What, talk about what life was like in Marshall and Jefferson back in that time period. I mean, the railroad right. played a major role. The, it That's did, true. and I know there's a lot of talk that... Um, Jefferson didn't want the railroad, but mm -hmm. actually Jefferson did want the railroad. It's just that they thought that it would complement the steamboat trade. I see. And so, because you had all the steamboat traffic, and then the, the railroad come through. And well, it's interesting because the TNP, of course, it was well, it's headquartered in, in here in Marshall, because it went east from Dallas, and then here, you know, it goes mm -hmm. north right. through Jefferson to Texarkana. Mm -hmm. uh, so Jefferson actually did want the railroad. It's just that they didn't, they mistakenly thought that the steamboat trade could survive too. Right. <laughs> and when, of course, you had the Army Corps of Engineers blow up the, the Red River raft, the log jam, right. um, that um, made the waters, that log jam made the waters navigable mm -hmm. from Shreveport all the way to Jefferson. Right. And once the Army Corps of Engineers blew that up in 1873, then, but it took a long time for the waters to recede. It I didn't see. happen overnight. Okay. So you still had steamboats coming. I think the last one was in the, the early 1900s. But it severely, it was really the railroads that really killed the, the steamboat. Killed it all. Yeah. Killed that. And then, of course, the, the water not being navigable anymore. True. So, but, yeah, Jefferson, and well, of course, you know, it has the New Orleans architecture because you mm -hmm. had the steamboats coming up right. from New Orleans. And so there was a, um, a really a, a large New, New Orleans influence on mm -hmm. Jefferson with right. the architecture. And, of course, they still have... Um, celebrate Mardi Gras. That's the biggest weekend there. Right, right. Um, and they have, and they have the uh, Queen Maeve Ball, mm -hmm. which they had in the 1800s. So I have that's in my book. Oh wow! The Queen okay. Maeve Ball in Jefferson. Man, which they still have today. I, don't, I think they may have, they may have revived it. I'm not 100 mm -hmm. percent sure, but you know, I know they they have it today. There is so much history, and it is amazing how quick things changed uh, back in those days. Like when the railway would come through, or something would be something that is as major as the river boats were and the steamboats, then all that's just gone. But you did say it took some time, but it's still very quick moving, right. um, moving pieces in there. Well, really, when you think about it. Changing the landscape and the mm -hmm. economy and the, what takes place mm -hmm. in a town. Yeah. I'm glad, though, that Jefferson's thriving today with being a, a large, you know, a great tourist destination mm -hmm. and all the B&Bs. Because when I was, we were there the end of April and stayed um, mm -hmm. At the carriage house in, in Jefferson, and, and they it's have so found great their to be niche. Yes, yeah, they, they have right. found their they niche. Do it well. We mm -hmm. we talk about that a lot, and we have lots of folks from Jefferson come here on the Talk of East Texas just to talk about the events and things that they're having, mm -hmm. and we really do feel a a, a camaraderie with them. So. There is an interesting Marshall connection that's a little bit in my book. I couldn't; it just didn't really work well. Sure. With, uh, um, in where the Janakio is. Mm -hmm. Uh, there used to be another building there be in the 1870s, uh, well before the Jericho right. family. Uh, um, Maurice Barrymore mm -hmm. and his acting troupe, Peter right. Marshall, mm -hmm. and there was a, uh, a sh Jim Curry, who was a railroad detective, mm -hmm. came to the restaurant that was next to the uh, train station because the acting troupe was about to leave that night. And uh, he came in, there was an altercation, and he shot and wounded. Maurice Barrymore, mm -hmm. and shot and killed um, another actor in the troupe. Okay. And so Maurice Barrymore actually re recuperated. He survived, obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Drew Barrymore's <laughs> his history. Yeah. yeah, yeah, his family. <laughs> he, but he's the, the, that patriarch of that you know famous right. um, acting family. Right. And he was here in Marshall for a month recuperating. Well, Jim Curry was okay. in 
Um, the railroad detective. Yeah, the railroad detective was in jail because Ma uh, Abe was not just in jail in Jefferson. He was also in jail for a time in Marshall. The first okay. trial was held in Marshall for Abe Rothschild. Right. And he was um, in the jail cell with Jim Curry. Wow. And, and then Jim Curry, and I just mentioned it briefly in here mm -hmm. that another trial took place before um, Abe's second trial, and which actually eventually moved back to Jefferson. But anyway, Jim Curry uh, was in the same cell, and his trial was before Abe's, and he was uh, acquitted. Jim Curry was acquitted uh, by reason of insanity, and the jury was out only like 10 minutes. Wow. <laughs> Didn't take long, did it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. Amazing. And Maurice Barrymore came to. Well, I know that the um, a, an independent group here uh, put on the uh, stagecoach days. They brought it back. Uh, okay. We've been without stagecoach days, fifteen to twenty years. I'm not sure how many years. It and they brought it back. Time. And it came back for the first time this year. In all, after all those years, and uh, Buddy Power Promotions put that on this year. And it was very well received and attended and pe vendors and all kinds of things. But they had some uh, local like shootouts in the streets that would have taken place back in the <laughs> stagecoach days. But they also did the reenactment of that of the very more shooting. Oh, they, they did? Yeah, they, they did it down uh, at the depot. Uh, okay. There, uh, and it was a, a little live presentation of some local actors who got together and put together <laughs> a little cool. local acting group. And it's a lot of fun. That's you amazing. Were, were you so, part of that? I was not part of that, <laughs> no. <laughs> Are they going to do it next year? I would, oh, I would suspect so. Okay, yeah. I'm going to have to look that so, up because I'd love to see Stage that. Stagecoach Days, again, it will be in May. Uh, in usually, May? It was okay. the first weekend in May always, but I think just scheduling, uh, I think, well, Pilgrimage, well, Pilgrimage, Pilgrimage was, was going so on they, in they had to make some, dip, some changes to plan. Okay. But that's okay. Keep yeah. your eyes open for Stagecoach Days. Now. Okay, yeah, yeah, I will. It's a lot of fun. Because it is an interesting Mm -hmm. But I couldn't really, I couldn't do more with it because it just didn't fit into sure, my yeah. novel. There is so much there, though. Yeah, no, there is. There's, yeah. there's, a, there's a lot, and it was. I'll show everybody the. Uh, yes, the cover. it's a, it's a beautiful book. I like the colors. And who would you? I mean, I know you would say everyone read it, but um, I always like to encourage folks that don't think that book would be for them mm -hmm. to say, well, think about this book because it is for you, or you well, may enjoy and it. It crosses genres. It's not straight historical fiction. Mm -hmm. It's part mystery, but it's more of a why done it than a who done it, and okay. it's also part ghost story. Oh, so yeah, it cro it's called you know genre bending, you know, okay. cross genre fiction. <laughs> okay, so it's not just straight historical fiction. I love it. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's a fun read. Yes, I okay. think it's a it's a, a fast read. Mm -hmm. um, has shorter chapters. That's what I like. This is a good vacation <laughs> book, isn't it? Yeah, this uh, would be yeah. a great beach read. It's <laughs> good if you're going to the beach, taking a cruise, or doing something like that. Grab mm -hmm. this book. And uh, where can we find your book? Uh, well, um, it's online, of course. Um, it's at Books and Barrels in Longview. Okay. And of course, I'll be at the Jefferson, uh, so the Carnegie Library in Jefferson tomorrow evening. Uh, I'm going to look into some places in, in Jefferson. I don't know where yet, but um, online, I guess. Well, in Shreveport, Barnes and Noble in Shreveport. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, so those two bookstores. And when you say and online, and some libraries. When you say oh, online, where do we go? Amazon. Okay. Or you can go to bookshop.org. Okay. Um, and there's IndieBound. Wherever books are sold. Where, wherever books wherever are books sold. Are sold. Where, you, wherever you like to buy books. <laughs> well, I'd like to try to support the indie bookstores too. You know, you I really. Certainly. And if you're really taking important. a road trip this summer, there's also an audio book. Yes, thank oh. you for reminding me. <laughs> there's it's paperback. Ebook, so it's on that? Kindle. <laughs> no, actually, didn't know it was I had a you? woman. Okay. I had a woman, woman read it. Oh, okay. yeah, she's Australian, but she oh. did an American accent. Really? Okay. Oh, she's great, Anthea Greco, and so I do have an audio book as well, and that's available wherever anybody where buys audio books or something. Yeah, where, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. This is so much fun. I, I think this is great. So, um, thank you, oh, thank for, you. For, for joining us. You are a lot of fun. Oh, you're And fun. I can imagine, you know, just you doing uh, coming to a book signing with you would be a, a lot of fun mm -hmm. as well. Folks, grab this yeah. book, The Lives of Diamond Bessie. The Lives, the plural lives of mm -hmm. Diamond Bessie. I love that. And um, as she talks about the many different facets of this intriguing lady. And um, and what happened, Joe? Thanks for letting yeah. me back in the building after forty-five years. You yes, did. Right. Because, well, yes, real quick, yes. We have like four minutes, so tell us quickly some history there, if you don't mind. Uh, this was my first job at KMHD Radio back okay. in nineteen seventy-three. I came in the uh, next on, year. I was on, born on, yeah. Friday, on Friday. <laughs> Thanks a lot for that. 
just want to give those <laughs> night history. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah. Came in on Friday nights to help John Gordon, who was running the, the night shift during Friday night football games. Okay. I would stand by the teletype, which is back in the, in the coffee shop. Yes. yes, and rip the scores off mm -hmm. and hand them to him, who would read them on the air. Okay. Uh, that was my job. And then in January, someone left, and Tony Bridge offered me uh, the job weeknights, uh, 6 to 11 on the radio. Weeknights, 6 15. to 11, and you were 15. Yes, and I would go back we're, to... I'd we're go back still to, up to that kind of business around here. <laughs> People would think that he was his yeah, father. Yeah, so I'd go to school the next morning, hey, I heard your dad on the radio. So that, <laughs> yeah, that was me. Awesome. So yeah. and I, I blame my brother for all of this, Robert. Uh, he's a year and a half older than me, and he's the one that told me about the job, the job here. here. Okay. Uh, well, and Robert's been the main anchor at KXAN, the NBC affiliate in Austin, for more than 30 years. Okay. So both of them he were retires in... this summer. Wow. But yeah, th this is where the career started. Uh, I love journalism since the seventh grade. Mm -hmm. Reading the 10 o'clock news, I was hooked. I, that's what I wanted to you do. You loved it. And he worked at NBC News, mm -hmm. and we worked in Houston, Shreveport, Dallas, and then for the network for NBC News, and then recently retired. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, so you had a great, great career. Great career. Sorry, we have. I have heard here. your voice growing up. Even I, <laughs> yes, I mean I have. So it's good. Thank you for Thank coming. You, we will always let you in the building, <laughs> um, and we'll let you read anything you want to read if you want to. So anyway, thank you so, Thank you much. so much. And uh, Jody and Charles Hadlock. Thank you for being a part today. We wish you the best, and we wish success on this book, The Lives of Diamond Bessie. Right, thank you so much. You bet. This has been the Talk of East Texas. I'm Joe Buck, your host. We are brought to you each day by Signature Cleaning Services in Wascom. Tina Lowry and her crew will clean your commercial or residential space. You can call them, and they will come see you for free estimate. Till tomorrow, God bless, and I'm Joe Buck. Don't miss the Swap Shop with James in just a moment.